Welcome to the presentation about learning styles. My name is James Mayer Pedersen. I'm from Albury University. So when we talk about student-centered learning, um, there is this important uh, Chinese proverb saying, tell me and I will forget, show me, I will remember, involve me and I will understand, step back and I will act. And that says something about that efficient learning is much more about sitting uh, in an auditorium, listening to someone else speaking, but that for most people, actually being active, involved, uh, doing things is a, is a much more efficient way of learning. Um, we can also say that actually the, the problem-based learning model was born from a principle of teaching less and learning more. Um, learning by heart is tough, and I will show the short example um, to demonstrate it. So remember this figure. Now, three, two, one, and we move on. Do you remember how to write four, five, six? If you do, you're really smart. But then how can I write one, two, seven? Do you remember the answer still? If you didn't figure out the system, then now try to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9 in exactly this layout by using the previous slide, the information you found. Of course, now you can see the system. What you see here, see here is also an example that you actually can learn a lot if you based it on some knowledge that you have already. And we all know how this uh, um, yeah, system looks like. And when we know it, it's very easy to construct also, and you can write now anything and you can remember anything about it because it's based on something you know already. But if it's something you have to learn by heart, it's super difficult. So it's telling us a lot about learning. There is this uh, Bales and um, there are different rumors about this being true or not, even if it's scientific or not, but I still like to use it as an example. So it's telling about how, what is the average retention from different kinds of learning. And what you see is that for most people, um, going to lectures or reading is actually not very efficient because we remember very poorly what is happening. So it's actually not efficient in terms of learning. But what is really efficient is when we go to the bottom of the pyramid with the discussions in group where you get to use the concepts and words and uh, phenomena you have learned about. Uh, it is practicing to actually doing something and teaching us is maybe the most efficient way of learning something. That fits well into the previous presentation you saw, that actually when we are talking about problem-based learning in groups, there is a lot of focus on exactly those uh, bottom part of the pyramid. So try to think about how you learn better. Is it from lectures, from reading, watching videos, solving exercises and problems, from doing things, for example, programming or doing project management, is it from discussions or is it from reflections where I think reflections is some, sometimes really overlooked which is when you have done something that you try to sit and you reflect what worked well, what didn't work well, um, why not and what will you do different in the future and I think that the reflection part is, um, is a really important part. When you see very good people, people who are very good in giving for example uh, presentations, they almost always have people sitting, uh, Obama is one example, of and listening to their presentations, following their presentations, and afterwards uh, discussing with them one, what went well and what didn't go so well, and then the next time they will try to improve this part. And by in this constant loop of, you can say, doing something, uh, reflecting on it and getting feedback and then trying again, is a very efficient way of learning. But we are all different and we all learn in different ways. So what is important uh, for you is to know your own learning strategies, know how you are learning well, and that will help you even if you're working alone or if you're working in a group. Um, I think it's also important to be aware of different learning traditions in different kind of universities, and this is where we are sometimes clashing, um, and that is happening for both students and teachers. So. Um, we can usually differ between what is called an exam-giving university and what is an instruction-giving university. 
So exam given universities, the really you can say that what the universities really offer is that you can go to the exam and you can uh, you can get a grade and you get a paper on what you have achieved. That's actually a very Scandinavian and, and also German tradition. Uh, it doesn't mean that the university doesn't offer courses or products, but it doesn't require that you follow the courses. How you learn it, it's, it's more or less up to yourself. They offer some possibilities for learning, they facilitate some learning processes, but at the end of the day, what matters is what you do at the exam table. We call this exam giving you investors. Um, that is, uh, that is uh, quite different from what is called instruction giving you investors, where you can find most American investors, where the really important part of studying is not to take exams, but really to, um, to follow courses or to receive instruction. Um, and when teachers from one tradition and students from another tradition meet each other, sometimes that can be clashing, and that's actually also between uh, teachers. Um, then we have what we can call uh, the difference between uh, lecture and seminar organized teaching and, and PBL and problem-based uh, problem learning. So um, problem-based learning is, for example, uh, Olbo University, whereas others are more uh, traditional with the lectures. And there are also actually in the in some of the American universities also PPL organized curricula, uh, but these different mindsets are meeting each other uh, very much in, for example, the Epic project, and that means that you might have some um, potential conflicts or potential misunderstandings, which can be which can be explained using uh, these concepts and understanding these different traditions. And with that, I will say thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. And the most important takeaway is really to think about your own learning style and your own learning preferences and how you can use that in your future, whether working alone or together with other people. Thank you very much.